Well, hello there. It's time for Boost Hubs. My name is Patrick. I do all the lathe programming, as well as some of the mill stuff. I would like to talk to you a little bit about these Boost Hubs. Why Boost? Why not? Bigger is better. For the longest time, we had 26 inch rims and a 135 hub spacing in the rear and a 100 in the front. And that was all fine and dandy until the rims started getting so much bigger and then the hubs and the spokes just, they just got weaker and it wasn't great. So now we have a 148 rear hub standard. Maybe not a standard, but maybe it will be one day. Maybe it is now, I don't know, but it's great. And what this allows you to do is it moves the flanges out so when the rim gets bigger and the spokes get longer, the angle, the bracing angle, uh, isn't as extreme as it would have been with a 135 spaced hub or a 142 spaced hub, which is the same flange width. So going to a boost gives you a stronger, stiffer wheel, which is more responsive on the trail, and it's just kind of, you know, awesome. So we have the hole punching machine set up, and I would like to show you how we put the holes in here and engrave our name on it and uh, counter sink it and do all the other deburring and tapping and great good fun stuff uh, that we do here. Now, how do we put holes in this thing? You know, we got holes on, on this side, and we got holes on this side, and then we got this engraving in the middle. So how do you hold to put holes in it? And the spindle and the tool come in only from this angle. So obviously we got to hold it like this, and then we got to hold it like that, and then we got to hold it like that. So this is a vertical milling center, a VMC, or a mill. Uh, and on this mill, we have an indexer, which is a fourth axis, and it spins about the X axis. So we have a soft jaw that can hold two of these things, which we will show you here in just a moment, like this, and then it can do uh, this, and then it can go like this and do the center. So we can do two hub shells and all the operations at once because this thing is going to spin around for us and I'll make it go so we can watch that. Uh, it does have coolant and it will spray us so we'll try to do some of the tools without coolant so we can look at it but um, unfortunately I think most of them need coolant so we'll just uh, see what we can do and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to manually rotate this thing so you can see how this works. They go in like this with no uh, holes in it no holes, straight off the lathe, three operations, and they come out like this. But I put a finished one in there just to demonstrate what it would look like after the cycle's done. So I'm gonna rotate it so you can see how we get the holes from here to there. Whoa! Now we can put holes over here. But what about the engraving, which needs to go in there? I don't know, let's see what we can do. Man, that is cool. That's so cool. It's so cool. And then, and then, it, you know, here, I don't know. And it's just a giant chuck. And then you got yourself a done hub shell. So now we're gonna run this a little bit, but we'll probably have to close the door. So let's see what happens. So this does the lobes for the disc part, and I'm gonna close the door. Now we need to finish it, so we got a finishing end mill. Spraying chips. Some holes are hard to drill, so we gotta spot them first. This is gonna spray us. Ah! So this is spotting the M5 uh, tapped hole before we drill it, and then it does a chamfer around the disc flange. It's a uh, 3 8 spot drill. So we recently, not too recently, a little while ago, we uh, added a dovetail to the back side of the disc flange to do some back uh, side uh, chamfering, take off the sharp edges, which I've noticed uh, is not very common on other hub shells. This is drilling the hole for the uh, M5 hole. Uh, yeah. 
and this is a tap. So it's gonna feed in clockwise, stop the spindle, boop, and feed out counterclockwise. These are cut taps. So it's actually gonna cut the threads. You can see the chip coming off there. Boop, stops and reverses, threads back out. Hopefully it doesn't break. This is actually a fort uh, deburring tool, which is gonna feed through that hole it just tapped. And it's got a little cutting edge on this side and it can flex. So when it feeds through, it flexes and then it opens up on the back side of the hole and actually does a little uh, back side of the hole countersink or chamfer uh, to deburr the, the back side, which you probably will never get your finger in there, but it's kind of a nice, nice feature. Maybe you can make it out, maybe not. So you can see it compressing there when it's coming back out. It doesn't ruin the threads, the threads still work just fine. Um, there's only one cutting angle and it's on the back side of the tongue of the tool. Cool stuff. So after we do all the deburring and the profiling and the tapping and all that stuff for the disc flange, we're going to come back in with a uh, number two center drill and do the countersinking, which is then followed by the sp uh, spoke holes, the actual drill, the drill the spoke hole. And then it does some rotations to do both sides. And then after that, it's going to do the, the engraving with a ball and mill. So it takes about a day and a half to make these jaws to hold these hub shells to do this really quick. And this next tool is the uh, is uh, the engraving tool, which we do the uh, the name Paul, the hub hub uh, spoke count 32, and uh, oh, and it's made in the United States. So to do that, it's got to it's got to come into this hole right here. So you don't want to run a tool into this nice jaw that Jim made uh, because that would be really bad and uh, it would take you know a couple days to remake these and uh, we'll, let's just watch it do its thing maybe. I'm going to stand back here. It's going to do a tool change and it may spray you just to be warned. So here we go. Ah! Ah! Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, it's running to the engraving tool path now. The tool is deep inside the jaw. And uh, we actually have to turn that tool holder down so it wouldn't uh, rub on the jaws on some of these jobs. It's pretty cool though. But when you're setting it up for the first time, it's quite, uh, it's quite unnerving. I've, uh, I've rubbed some stuff when I sh you know, shouldn't have. Nothing big, but you know, made some noise. And uh, we all had lunch. So that's how it's made. Check it out, paulcomp.com. Hello. We're in assembly. Maybe you've been here before. But now, I'm gonna hand you over to Rachel to show you how these things go together. And it's gonna be amazing. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rachel. I work here at Paul I'm doing assembly. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how we put together our um, new boost hub. First off, we push the bearings in. And then one on the other side. And then we move on over here. So now I'm going to put the axle in. We're just going to grease it up a little bit because we have different metals that are rubbing together and we want to make sure that we get no squeaks and no bad movements there. Everything's nice and clear and ready to go. Alrighty, and then we put it into our hub shell. And then we're going to move over here. And we're going to put our adjuster on. We're going to loosen it up a little bit so we have some, some play. And we'll spin it on. And we want it tight enough that there's still um, nice uh, nice movement in the hub, uh, but not too loose so that it's going to be moving around on its own. There's no play here. 
That's looking good. Tighten it up. And then we'll get the end cap on. Two clicks for good luck. And then we'll just have to clean it up and it's ready to go home with you. I already showed you guys the boost word. Um, here's our regular word right here, just for a little bit of size comparison. Um, and then here we also have our boost fub, then compared to our regular fub. As you can see, it's, it's a little bit longer. And that's the lowdown on how we make our boost hubs from manufacturing to assembly and getting ready to get packaged and sent to you. Hubs, light mounts, hubs, skewers, more hubs. And that's a wrap. <laughs>